Um, but yeah, so people have a hard time with combos, not just because they don't have their expectations properly set, right? That's part of it, obviously. Um, but also because the games don't actually teach you how to do combos. They teach you the inputs that you have to do, and they can show you a recording of the combo, but they don't actually do much to tell you why uh, the combo isn't working when you try to do it. Um, and without, if you don't already understand what's going on in fighting games, if you're not sure uh, how to read the information that the screen is telling you, then it can be really hard to actually figure out how to do the combo. A lot of times, people will tell me that they just feel like they're doing, like, they'll get the list of inputs and they'll be like, okay, that's the combo, but they can't do it, right? Because they don't know how the moves are actually supposed to, to flow into each other. And without an understanding of, like, some pretty fundamental concepts like cancels and hit stop and whatever, it's hard to uh, arrive at the correct combo timing and execution um, unless you're just kind of brute forcing your way through it. And that doesn't really feel great either. So we're going to turn on these jams real quick. We got a, uh, this is a simple and clean um, cover. And we're just going to go over some of the, some of the tips that I go that I, I, I cover in this essay. Just the thing of it is the video accompaniment. Um. Oh, and real quick, Subway Wang says, "Yo, Pat, I, I generally like low execution zoner type characters in fighting games. Bonus points they're not popular. Do you think I would like Dizzy or Zato more? Zato is high execution. Dizzy, I don't know as much about. I would describe her as lower execution. Anyway, back to combos. So, combos. You got." Uh, someone will give you a list of combos. I'm working through this right now with Johnny, right? I have a really good playlist from Brett with some Johnny combos. I also have a list that Rush has dumped on me. Uh, and I've been working through these. But the thing is, is that I know the rules as to how combos work. And because of that, it feels like a kind of fun test. It feels kind of like it, the, the hands version of putting together a crossword puzzle or something, right? Um, but if you don't have this perspective, you don't have this understanding of how combos work, they just feel arbitrary. And you think that the game's teaching you to do some arbitrary shit, and that sucks. At least it, that doesn't necessarily feel like the kind of game that a lot of people want to play when they get into fighting games. So step one, uh, the, the biggest tip that I can give you, the, for at least the most important first step, is uh, go ahead, see there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of options in this here training mode. Go ahead, go to display settings or in whatever game you're playing and just turn on input history right here. It's really important, see this? So that you can see it showing up here on the left-hand side. All those directions, we got some buttons going. It's telling me what I'm doing. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, I know how to do a fireball, right? I know it's just down, down toward, toward and punch, right? The chip version would be like this, right? And sure, sure enough, well, we, in this case, it's down, down toward, toward and punch, right? But if you're a little bit, uh, if you're trying to execute this in the moment, right, maybe it looks like that. Maybe it looks like that, right? A little bit of sloppiness to your execution. You might still think, oh, I'm doing a core circle forward the whole time, but the input reader, the input display will tell you if it's actually getting the core circle forward or if it's getting something else, right? Uh, I know it's annoying and can be hard to read sometimes, but this is really important for troubleshooting your combos. You need to know not what you think you're doing, but what the computer, what the PS4, or whatever is telling you you're doing, right? So input display is number one. Special shout out real quick to Uni. I don't know if you can see these numbers here next to the uh, the inputs, but Uni here will actually tell you how many frames you're holding each direction for, which is pretty fucking sick. Hey, what up, newbie? Good to see you. Skiz Turtles, you too. Um, this is one of my favorite features uh, in a fighting game, to be honest, um, just because it helps you better understand the timing. Guilty Gear doesn't do that, but they still give you a pretty good uh, training mode display overall. Um, so tip number one, Turn on your goddamn input display. I know it's ugly, it's visually noisy, it doesn't matter, just do it. The second thing is, uh, you gotta know how each hit is supposed to connect, right? And the example that I use in the essay is like, is reuse uh, stand medium punch, stand medium punch into core circle forward, um, and pretty much any punch for a Hadouken, right? Uh, hilariously enough, that kind of combo also kind of works with chip, so I'll demonstrate this with chip. We just need Slayer crouching first, okay? Right? But the combo would look something like this. Oops. Right? You got 
You can just pre pretend that's Ryu doing two stand medium punches into a fireball, except instead it's Chip doing close ass, right? Now here's the thing. If someone just tells you, and it, you can turn on, there's like a combo recipe uh, display in here, right? You can turn that on. Boom, 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 right? If you look at the combo display, you'll just see the attacks, right? You'll see two close range S's, and then core circle four and S to get ratio, right? None of that information will tell you how uh, these attacks are actually supposed to flow into each other, right? So if you're if you're experienced with fighting games, you already know that com there's a, a bunch of different ways that mo moves can combo into each other. And in particular, this combo uses two different ways. So the two close S's, right? The two close S's here, there's no canceling involved. We're not prematurely ending the animation for the close S. The way this move works, you, uh, Chip has enough hit stun on it when the opponent is crouching in this case. Um, th that's a weird Guilty Gear thing, but there it is. Uh, that the move can combo into itself. Now you need to be properly spacing and timing, but it's not easy. Um, but there's there's no like, there, there, there's there's no skipping of any animation frames. You're not you're not ending something early and going into something early. Um, all you're doing is just doing this move that links into itself. And so we call this a link, right? Um, because there's nothing about this move or, or the way you're doing it um, that changes the property of the move. You're just timing it well. And so you get two close S's. Hey, what up, Dan and Daddy? Good to see you. I think if I run, yeah, you can actually get three. Check that out. Uh, uh, uh. And if we turn up the counter hit real quick, we might be able to get four. Oh, almost. Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, not quite. But there you go. That's the idea. Right? So the two S's in here, that's a link, right? And what? And again, all that means is I'm pressing the button for close S, and then I'm pressing it again right when, or, or ideally exactly when, the first close S ends, and they're able to, to link into each other, right? But that's not how the second part goes, right? So the second part of the combo, oops, is canceling into rest show, right? Hey, what up, Bubbles? And notice that wasn't a link into rest show. That was a cancel into rest show. So the second close S, you don't get to, it's, I know it's a little hard to see, but you don't actually get to see it finish the animation because we went straight into rest show. We didn't let the close S finish before starting the rest show. And that's, we call that a cancel because what you're doing is you're prematurely leaving uh, the, the, the close S here and going straight into the rush show. Um, back in the day, they used to also call this two in one. Um, there's been a bunch of different names for it. And the way this works is this is true. So most attacks in guilty gear, especially normals are cancelable. And what that means is not, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't mean like, oh, you got to roam and cancel it. That's different. It just means that when the attack hits, Pretty much for normal is almost anything. Um, when the attack hits, uh, you'll notice that the, the the game pauses for like a fraction of a second, right? They both both characters kind of hold that hit pose a little bit more, right? Um, and during this time, you can input another move, and if the if the the second move is a legitimate cancel from the first, if the game says, "Hey, you can do this." Um, then you will exit that first move and go straight into the second move, right? So again, that's uh, 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 right? Oops. There we go. That's the idea, right? And if you... So, so the, the easy way to think about this is if you get to see the move end, like go from beginning to end, it's a link. And if you don't get to see one move finish before another move before another move hits, then it's it's going to be a cancel, right? Now, when you're doing combo trials, the game won't tell you, hey, this is a link or this is a cancel. When you're writing combos out, the convention, at least the old convention, I don't know how many people still do this, um, and it kind of depends on the game. But the old convention was you you if you have like stand medium punch and a stand and then a comma and then stand medium punch, that means it's a link. And if you have stand medium punch xx and then it's the second move that denotes a cancel right but the main thing you're looking for here is if you're going from the hit pop the hit pose like this like that right there straight into another move that's a cancel and if not if you get to see the whole attack right uh then that's a link 
okay? And this is really important, but the game doesn't tell you that. And if the game doesn't tell you that, uh, th and, and you don't know how this shit works, then you just need to figure that out, and that fucking sucks. All right, so let's move on to the next point. Uh, special moves. Special moves are a combination of a series of directional motions and then a button, right? For rest show, as an example, it's a core circle forward and then a slash, right? It is really important, and if you look at my hands, you can see me doing this, I am doing the quarter circle forward, and then as, as soon as I am finishing that quarter circle forward, I'm getting, oop, in this case, I'm fucking it up. As soon as I finish the quarter circle forward, I'm going into the slash. If I press the slash too early, uh, oh, that wasn't too early, nice. If I press the slash too early, then I get 2S. If I press the slash a little bit later than that, I still get 2S. Um, if I press the slash at the same time, then I get, I get what I want, right? So the way that special moves work, you can see this input buffer here, right? When I press a button, the game checks my inputs from the last couple frames to see, hey, what did this motherfucker do before he pressed the button? Because based on what he did before he presses the button, we're gonna give him something different, right? As an example, if I do quarter circle forward and then walk forward and press S, I'm not gonna get my fireball or my, my rest show, even though the input history is what you would look for because I walked forward for like 20 frames and the input buffer doesn't read that far back, right? But it does read a couple frames back. And so the main thing you wanna keep in mind is, and this is, you will notice this particularly if you are going for a special move in a combo and you're not getting it, uh, you're probably pressing the button too early. If you're pressing the button too early, then you're, you'll probably just get that normal instead, right? Um, and if you're pressing the button too late, you'll probably get the special you want, it just won't combo. Right, but you need to remember that you have to be finishing the directional motion before you press the button. If you press the button and then you go, you finish the rest of the core circle forward, the game will probably not give you the thing you want because when you press the button, it it checks your input history and says, nah, this this person has not done the, the a core circle forward yet. I just see a down and a down toward, and that's not enough. Right? You don't. One one uh, tip that I like to, to help keep in my mind uh, when I'm messing this up is that really, if I think of special moves, whether it's a core circle forward, it's a half circle forward, it's a dragon punch input, whatever, right? Whatever special move you're doing, I like to think of it as my left hand handing something to my right hand, right? There we go. That's half circle back forward, hard slash. Um, you saw my left hand do it, and as soon as it was done, my right hand presses the button. And if you think of special moves not as, oh, both hands are doing something at the same time, but rather that your left hand is doing something and then your right hand is finishing it, right? It's finishing the input. Uh, then it'll make it a little bit easier for you to pace your inputs so that you get the special moves when you want to. And again, one of those things that most games don't make you learn, right? Most video games, you can do whatever with your left hand and your right hand, and the two won't necessarily interfere with each other, right? You think about Mega Man, right? You're moving and you're shooting, or you're moving and you're jumping and you're shooting, whatever. Uh, if you fuck up, you will be facing the wrong way when you're trying to jump or shoot, but you don't get something completely different, right? You don't get something that's not a move or a shoot. Um, and fighting games are a little bit more unique like that. Fighting games are more like kind of uh, piloting your character than, than uh, other games are. And that, that's something that's really tricky for a lot of people. Um, so next tip here, I describe this in the essay, is using your character's actions as a timing hint. And really, it's just thinking, so if we return to this this combo before, right? Oops. <laughs> the, the close S, close S into Resho, where for Chip, that's slash, slash into Resho. And then if you did that with Ryu, it would be medium punch, medium punch, fireball. Um, paying attention to what the character is actually doing is useful for helping you figure out your timing. Right? So at first, you're just going to press close S. And you know that in however many frames, you need to press a second, the second close S. Your left hand, your stick hand, or your D-pad hand, or whatever, doesn't need to do anything here. Right? It's not a big deal. You're just going to press that button. You're great. But for the second input, right, you're going to press S again, but this time you need a quarter circle forward. Where do you put that quarter circle forward? Well, if you treated it as a link, if you thought that, that uh, these link into Resho, right, like that, then what you get is uh, you'd want to start the quarter circle forward um, during the entirety of this close S animation and press uh, slash once again 
as soon as the animation was done. But because it's a cancel, you don't actually have that much time to finish the core circle forward, right? What happens is you have basically the hit stop time to perform the core circle forward, and by the time and and when the attack animation plus the hit stop is over, you better be pressing that button, right? So the cadence comes a little bit quicker than if it were a link, right? Um, and it can be really hard to deduce this on your own, but if you know how these moves work, right? And if you think about, oh, so this is what's happening uh, when Chip does this, right? When he goes in the close slash, and then when he recovers, uh, when he go, uh, when he he cancels from one hit to the other, then it can be easier to figure out when you're supposed to do your core circle forward, right? Part of doing combos is figuring out when your left hand is supposed to be doing something and when your right hand is supposed to be doing something. And again, uh, hey, Apple Kid, thank you so much for the sub, homie. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Earthbound, by the way. Orange Kid and Apple Kid were highly underrated. Um, now, on its own, you might, like, let's say you're, you're messing this combo up. You don't really know what you're doing wrong. The game's not going to tell you uh, what you're doing wrong. But... If you look at what's going on with this game, like what the characters are actually doing when you're messing up your combo, you can kind of figure it out, right? So for starters, if I'm trying to link close slash into itself, right, like that, but instead I get, well, in, in Guilty Gear's case, that's called a Gatling combo, it's a chain. You can go from close slash and cancel it into a far slash. And that's not what we want, right? So. Because, it, because we know that, that how this cancel works, you can look at that, at that and go, oh, I'm pressing my, my slash too early. And so the game's reading it as a cancel when I want, what I want is a link. So you have to delay the button press a little bit, right? Um, if games don't have uh, a, a, a Gatling system like this and you're pressing the button too early, then you probably just wouldn't see that second attack at all, right? Because you're pressing it while Chip is, or, or Ryu or whoever is still doing something and they're in a state where they can't exit out, right? Um, however, if you get both close slashes, but you don't get a combo counter on that, it doesn't say two hits, oops, like that. <laughs> so that, yeah. That right there. That the, so, uh, if you get both close slashes but they don't combo, then you've done the second close slash too late, and so you need to press that button a little bit earlier, right? And it's the same thing with the fireball. So, uh, or you know, in this case, the rush show uh, uh, move, right? If I do it, so there actually the the slashes didn't link, but the the rush show from the sec second slash worked fine, right? So I can tell, oh, I was I was a little bit late on my stand medium punch or my close slash, but the rest of it was fine, right? Um, but yeah, the, the, these diagnostic tools work with cancels as well, right? If you go one, two, oops, and then you're late on the on the fireball, you'll get your move, but it won't combo, which means that you did it too late. You probably timed it as a link. And so you gotta look at it and think, okay, I should be speeding this input up, right? And if you go, if you got that, what probably happened there was you pressed uh, the, the 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 third button too fast, right? You didn't finish the quarter circle forward, and so you got two S because your stick was still in uh, in diagonal down or or just down, right? And so by comparing, hey, oh, this is what's going on in the input reader. This is what's going on on screen. And this is how these different attacks and the, 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 the ways that they connect into each other work. You can look at, at yourself trying to do a combo and you can kind of, and, and you can see how the game in its rather limited way tries to give you the feedback to, to fix that combo, right? Um, it's kind of like, if any of y'all are into any programming or anything, it's kind of like, uh, running something and seeing it like freak out and not work the way it's supposed to, but ideally with a debugger and some intelligence looking at the screen to figure out like uh, kind of what you're seeing instead of the thing that you wanted to happen, uh, you can kind of work backwards to troubleshoot and figure out what it is that you're messing up. Um, so those are the basics for uh, for for some just some general combo tips um, in terms of troubleshooting. There's a couple other tips that I like mentioning for folks just uh, just in case they haven't heard it. This is all like kind of like this is stuff that I think just gets passed on from word of mouth for the most part. For one, uh, we'll pick we'll pick May for this. So charge characters, the way they work uh, is they have some special moves that you hold usually down or back, but if you're Batista, then you can do whatever. Um, 
And so the, the idea is you hold, let's say, back for like two seconds usually. And then you press forward, and in this case, S, and you get this charge move, right? Um, and sometimes people think, well, the, the, there are a couple misconceptions with charge moves that make people think they're actually harder than they are, right? Hey, what up, Tom? Tom? Congrats on the win last weekend. Um, so for starters, down back counts as charging down and back. So from, from holding down back, uh, I can go into May's flash kick move, right? Charge down and then up and flash. Or I can go into the horizontal one, right? And you can actually use, you can, you can actually, like in, in my case, this is going from down back to up back. So I'm still keeping the, the, the backwards charge, even though I'm using the vertical charge, right? The other thing that people don't realize when playing charge characters is that charging doesn't start when, when you've stopped doing something. Charging is happening uh, whenever you're holding that, that uh, direction, and it stops when you let go of the stick or when you leave that direction, the back or down back in this case, right? What that means is if I want to combo, let's say I just, we'll do something silly like this, right? Boom. So it's crouching P three times into horizontal Mr. Dolphin, right? If I just gave you that combo, some people who, who don't quite understand how charges work would go, oh, so I go PPP, and then I hold back for two seconds, and then press forward and slash, right? Well, there's no way that's ever going to combo. I know May has a lot of hits done on our attacks, but she don't got that much, right? Instead, the idea is that what I'm doing is I'm holding back, or in this case, down back, while I'm doing the punches, and the charging counts. And a lot of people don't quite get this, and so they, they, they die on, like, May's third or, or maybe it's fourth or fifth uh, 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 basic combo trial because that stuff has you do something like like that. It's like, I don't remember exactly what it is. But yeah, you need to remember that charging happens when you're holding the stick, not when your character is necessarily doing something. Um, yeah, so other tips in general, I like to recommend that people get in the habit of occasionally letting go of the stick when they're doing something. Um, I'll we'll, we'll switch back to Chip for this one. Hey, Gooperman, thank you so much for the four months, homie. I appreciate it. Oh. Hush, Google. <laughs> I think my phone heard, hey, Gooperman, as hey, shh, yep. Go away, phone. Don't listen to me. Um, so, all right, we'll, we'll stand Slayer up for this one. So, in general, you're going to be using your left hand to input directions. You're going to be doing it a lot because these characters need to move a lot. Um, but, oops, we'll turn off the combo recipe here because that's kind of obnoxious. Um, but, it can be very useful when troubleshooting your combos uh, to get in the hang, to get to get the hang of uh, letting go of the stick or or the D-pad or whatever, so that so that the stick can return to neutral. And the reason is, uh, again, this depends on the fighting game. Not all fighting games work this way, but in general, lots of games will take the return to neutral as a as a uh, a sign that they should clear the input buffer earlier. And what this means is that. Uh, the, it, the input buffer is your input history, right? So this is where it's checking to see all the different inputs that we've put in over the last X frames or whatever. And if I if I can clear it, then the next motion that I do, there's gonna be fewer directions, fewer inputs in the buffer that the game has to read through and think, okay, what did this motherfucker try to get, right? Um, this is all a way of saying that letting go of the stick can help, oh, I dropped it there. Letting go of the stick can help you clean up your inputs. Um, which makes it, which is really useful when you're doing a lot of special moves in close succession, because especially with like stuff like uh, core circle forward inputs and whatever, if you do them too quickly or you stagger your button button timing a little bit, you might find that uh, uh, you'll accidentally get a dragon punch input or something like that, and you don't want that. So learning to uh, uh, to return to neutral, yeah. If you're not playing a charge character, if you're playing a charge character, then you usually need to hold it in that direction. Um, but learning to, to just return to neutral can help you clean up your execution a lot. Also, uh, while I say that, I, I say return to neutral, I just mean let go of the stick a little bit. What I see sometimes when people do a core circle forward is they'll put way too much strength in it, and they might get the move, but they probably won't because they'll end up, see, look at this. 
Look at how my hand is almost like flying off the stick. I see new players do this all the time. And this is not what you want. Yes, you can do that and still get what you want if you press your button a little bit earlier, but it's it, it's it's not the, the most effective, especially if you then need, need to do something immediately afterwards. So while I say let go of the stick, do not fling it in, in a direction. Don't. Don't do this, right? You don't want to take your hands completely off the stick. You just want to let go so that you can return to neutral. Um, let's see. Oh, next tip. Stop fucking mashing. If you see that the button, the combo has three button presses in it, then do three button presses. Don't, don't mash out that last hit. Don't mash out links. Don't do whatever. Try and learn the clean, the good timing first. There are times where you want to add a couple extra uh, uh, inputs. Um, you can do stuff like double tapping. So you take two fingers and just alternate. Um, so you can get you can hit the same button very quickly, right? Um, or sometimes, like if you're playing older Street Fighter games, uh, like Third Strike is good for this, uh, and you want to cancel into Super, right? So you do crouch, medium kick into into Super. You'll you'll piano the kicks like that because the game is doesn't care what strength kick you uh, you use to get that Super. It just wants to look for a kick. Right, and so by pianoing, you're maximizing the chances that you'll get the thing you want. The, this is what I would call a calculated mash, right? That's that's something that makes it a little bit easier for the game to look at your inputs and real and give you the thing that you want. But until a hey, what up, Eugene? Uh, <laughs> until you are good enough at the combo that you know the timing and you know when you're supposed to be pressing those buttons, press the buttons only enough times to get the thing that you want, right? Don't press more buttons than you need to because that increases the risk that you'll get something that you don't want, okay? And the, 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 the last major tip here is when you're practicing a combo, at first, you're just trying to learn the timing. You're trying to learn how the shit works, right? Um, you're you're uh, getting used to how the moves connect with each other, maybe getting used to the situations in which you're supposed to land it, that kind of thing. But the focus is mostly on your hands, right? Once you get better at the combo, though, uh, once you get better at the combo, you can... Uh, it doesn't mean you've mastered it, right? Like, let's say let's say I get this, uh, this uncling alpha. Yay, I got it. That doesn't mean I'll get it every single time just because I got it that one time, right? And there are things that you can do to practice combos um, to kind of uh, uh, become more consistent, right? One of the oldest techniques that uh, I've seen lots of fighting game players use is when there's a combo they're working on, or even if it's just a, like a B&B, &B, they need to make sure that they don't fuck up. Uh, they'll practice doing the same combo five times in a row on one side without messing up, and then switch to five times in a row on the other side without messing up, and go back and forth. Exactly, Elsa. That's the problem, right? You want to be able to practice both sides frequently, and you want to be consistent. And so doing them in sets of five or ten or whatever um, can be a way to force yourself to become more consistent, right? But once you've done that, there's still more that you can do before to practice before you try and land it in a live match, right? So one thing that you can do is you can set the dummy to random block, right? So we'll go ahead and switch it to random because for that combo, right? This whole combo, I don't want to just do it mindlessly, right? If if the dummy blocks, I want to go do something else. And I should I need to practice like going into this combo and paying attention uh, to see whether the 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 opponent character is blocking or not before I go deeper into my route, right? For example, if Slayer's blocking I'm going to end that that combo at rest show, if not earlier. I'm not going to go all the way into here because that's a terrible idea for Chip. He's super negative. It's really punishable. You don't want to go that deep on the combo. If Slayer's blocking this, there are other things I want to do, right? And when I'm playing against a human being, I would definitely want to make sure that I'm not autopiloting my combo all the way through because they will kill me for that. That's no good, right? So pra practicing your combo with random block on helps get you used to the idea that your opponent will be blocking and to be ready to do other other shit instead, right? Once you're good at that, then the next thing you do is you turn up the CPU. We'll let it go to 100, because why not? Oh my god, CPU a wild boy, right? Uh, but this is because so far we focused on, on just landing that combo, and when all you have to think about is landing that combo, it's, it's not the hardest. Oh my god. So instead, you're, you can practice against the CPU. In this case, you can get murdered by level 100 Slayer. Uh, and even though it's not like a real match or anything, you still have to think about other stuff before you land the hit that takes you to the combo. 
Oh, I did it. Yay. <laughs> right? And this, again, is a skill that you're going to have to get used to, right? Because this will teach you to recognize the scenarios that lead up to your combo. So you don't have to think about landing the combo until... Oh, man, really spamming shit here. You don't have to think about landing the combo until you're in a situation where it's about to come up, right? You don't want to be thinking about landing the combo all the time. You want to think about landing the combo right before you need to land the combo. And in doing this, you can practice your, your new combos in a pretty safe environment, right? You're still in training mode. There's a big gap between doing a combo a couple times in training mode and be able, being able to do it in, uh, in you know, against a live person in a real match, right? And so some of these tips can help you just practice better, right? Help you bridge that gap. Um, but lastly, and this is kind of the last tip here in this video, uh, it's okay to not be able to do a combo. These things take a while to learn how to do properly. And if you, uh, if you can't do it the first time, that's fine. If you can't do it after the first day, that's still fine. You might, oh, actually, shit, I need to change my video settings real quick. Uh, you might not be able to do a combo for a week. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Just keep practicing it. Keep trying it. Um, you will be, uh, you will be surprised at how much, how you can actually get better just in between training sessions, right? Uh, if you've ever played an instrument, you might find that one day you practice a part and the net and it just feels impossible. And then the next day you practice it and you kind of, you kind of got it a little bit better, right? Combos are the exact same thing. And, uh, if you get used to that, then you get, you can feel a little better about not being able to do a combo immediately, right? It doesn't matter if you can, uh, if you can't do the combo, just keep trying it and you'll be able to do it eventually. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed these combo tips. Now let's play some motherfucking video games. What up, Graffiti Bandit? Good to see you. All right. And if you if you came in late or you didn't see that, the essay here is some tips for learning combos or why your shit didn't work.